Hey everyone, the 6.5 is here at Computex 2024 in Taiwan. We are doing an exclusive series of conversations with the team at Qualcomm. It's been a big week for all things AI, all things compute. We've talked about lots that comes from the data center to the edge to the devices in our hands, but nothing this week has been bigger than the conversations around Copilot plus PC. It's been a tremendously interesting week hearing from all the companies, but we're gonna hear right now from someone that we love to have on the show, someone that's been on the show many times before, Cristiano Amon, President, CEO at Qualcomm. He's back. Cristiano, thanks so much for sitting down with us. Very good to be here. Good to talk to you, Dan and Ryan. That's great. Different uh, co-pilot, speaking yes. of. Yeah. <laughs> it's a co-pilot plus. <laughs> there you go. Make sure we let Pat know that. Hey, okay. Pat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for being here. It's, it's great to talk to you. The, Obviously, everything here this week has been AI PC, Copilot Plus PCs. This is kind of the most excitement that I've seen at a Computex event in maybe a decade. Uh, I'm curious, from a just a more generalized AI perspective, how do you view AI in this evolution of computing? How it affects Qualcomm? What kind of opportunities does it provide you as you do this transition? Look, it's, it's a broad question, and uh, I think we're. I'm very passionate about this. I think the company's very passionate about this. We think it's a very significant transition and it's going to change how we use our computing devices. It's not only about the PC. I think just Microsoft has done a tremendous uh, job in changing themselves into an AI company, AI company and you probably expect them to be leading on the PC, but it's going to change everything. It's going to change cars, it's going to change phones. And uh, whether you do uh, natural language through a text to voice or even touching I think we see that it's going to have a fundamental impact in how those devices work and for us it creates two things broadly um, it, cre it creates an incredible opportunity for innovation and especially as we think about this new computing platforms that uh, we can we can do also resets the market uh, as you could create new upgrade cycles of phones or, P or PCs, and, and, I, and I think we've seen an incredible change happening on cars, and, and it's very profound. One thing that I often see a little bit of a confusion, and I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but the AI and Gen AI in the cloud, in the device, they're different. Yes, you're gonna have, you can have the same thing. You can have a certain models that you can run in the cloud, you can run them on a device. But they're going to evolve in a very different way. And I think the Copilot Plus presented by Microsoft and all the devices here is a way to actually describe that very clear. They have different roles. Especially when you think about the PC, I know I'm just gonna talk about the three things, right? You get, you get entertained, you, com you create, uh, and you're productive in the PC. So if you think about something like creation, creativity, the ideation phase, you're doing things, you're trying, you wanna do those things on the device. If anything, there's an economic equation right there of being running models on the cloud. But the other things, which is how you deal with personalization and privacy and all of that. So, so the AI is, it's big, it's gonna be the next cycle, it's gonna change, it's gonna change how we think about experience, it's gonna change apps, and I think it's gonna be a positive thing for all of our business. Yeah, you hit on a lot of things there, Christian. Do you remember, I think it was two years ago, MWC, Stable Diffusion broke out, and, and, and I think you and I and Patrick, we hopped on a video really quickly, because you were like, I remember how excited you were, and, and you know, obviously we were first looking at it on handsets, but I know that day, I remember you kind of pulling us aside and saying what this is gonna mean for the PC business and, the, and where you were heading with Snapdragon, and at the time it was CX, now it's the X Elite. But you, you did just kind of hit on the diversification, which you talked about automotive. You, you know, you're, you're here doing PC. You guys obviously have so much provenance on the, on the handsets, you, IoT. Diversification strategy is working, but I think one of the things you're really after is being seen not just as a mobile, but as a compute company as a whole. How much does this win, getting Microsoft to come out, uh, you know, advocate for your platform above others, um, seeing all these OEMs choosing designs with you, and the success of all these other business, how much is it accelerating your strategy to be a compute company? Oh, it's massive. Uh, it's, it's what I said at the Computex keynote. This is like graduation date for Qualcomm as a computing company. Like I cannot pick a better example, just, just think about this. 
We, we said that we are moving from a comms company, communication company, to a connected computing company and one that is going to enable intelligent computing everywhere. So historically, when, when people think about, name a, a, a computing semiconductor company, right? Make a semiconductor company which is a leader in computing. The Qualcomm name will not come up. Now it's different. If you think about it, we're just restoring, we're just restoring the performance computing leadership to the Windows ecosystem and is enabled by Qualcomm, non but done existing players. So I cannot think of a better example of we have arrived into proving ourselves we're gonna be not only a comms leader but a computing leader based on what we have done with Copilot Plus PCs. And it's actually flattering for us to see some of the existing players in the PC space to say, look at me, I have this too. I have something, I have something that it likes Qualcomm. Let me benchmark myself about Qualcomm. Qualcomm, the new entrant in, in this, all of a sudden coming in with the with the leadership uh, position. This is a great position to be in, and I think it speaks to, first of all, how determined we are to diversify and grow the company, but I think the quality of the Qualcomm uh, technology. Hey, we, uh, we've done some of those benchmarks. We have, we have done some of those benchmarks, pretty good results. I, I'm curious, you talk about needing to be performance platform. I think the NPU has been a big focus of the discussion, uh, right? That's Microsoft's emphasis is on low power AI compute. I'm also curious though, when you talk about kind of other companies benchmarking themselves to you, it's this, uh, uh, the advent of your Orion CPU core, right? How important is that to how you've, what you've been able to build for X Elite, but also how you're going to drive that forward through the rest of your, your roadmap? Look, it, it's very important, but it's also important to understand um, what is unique about Snapdragon. It's not about one thing. See, the, here's what I like about, uh, about Qualcomm and how we think about uh, our technology. And, and that is all because of our mobile heritage. You have some companies saying, look at, look at me, I have a CPU, or look at me, I'm a leader in the GPU. Uh, or, so from a Qualcomm perspective, is it has to be all of the above. Like, think of a company that has so many technologies under the same roof. We have the fastest CPU of any, any laptop right now, which is Orion, and that's important. That's important. It's going to go. We we're been we're been doing what we said we're going to do. We're going to bring that to PCs. Next, going to be phones, and then Auto is going to be in, in our entire uh, uh, you know product portfolio. But then you think about Adreno GPU in terms of sustained performance. A lot of people talk about uh, about uh, benchmarks, but if you're actually playing a game for several hours on a battery powered device, sustained performance matter, and Adreno has been the leader of sustained performance um, because it's just performance per watt. Then all of a sudden there's this NPU thing. And this NPU is this new engine that is cre doing this new computation that wasn't being done before. The CPU and the GPU had a job to do and he has to, to run the AI for the Copilot Plus. So I think the answer to your question is, what is unique about Snapdragon is not just, it's just not one trick pony. It's not just we got the Orion CPU and therefore now we have a different experience. No, the Copilot Plus on X Elite is the combination of the CPU, the GPU, the NPU, which was revolutionary for AI, but even like the ISP. We're bringing that from mobile. Is We see now on the Copilot Plus PC, the first our sensing camera, and all the things you can do with large visual mo models by processing images. We saw an example of an application that was developed using the AI Hub, using the camera. So it's a whole new world, and I think it's about bringing the what is best of the Snapdragon platform to try to create those new experiences, which is no longer defined by a single element of computing. Yeah, and it's moving very quickly too. And you can see, I mean, obviously how quickly you've been able to, you know, bring developers in in the AI Hub. Uh, you saw some of the applications. I, I like the demo of the DJ one. You know, that's I, cool. It was super cool to see how, you know, because I think a lot of people right now are kind of looking for that. What is the NPU bringing? Because you know, you're hearing some early, of course, Recall has been kind of the hero app, but there's going to be more and you're starting to show people what those experiences are going to look like. I want to start to kind of look ahead a little bit here with you, Cristiano. I mean, look, you're, you're, you're competing with legacy, 
And again, those are very entrenched, very successful legacies that have created the commercial and, and client PC. And clearly, you know, whether it's been Best Buy CEO coming out, Microsoft coming out, there are a lot of people that are clearly rooting for Qualcomm, Snapdragon X Elite to be successful. A lot of people aren't even talking about the fact that, you know, you're creating a platform that, that is similar to what Mac has done when they moved to an ARM-based architecture as well. And they showed the world that this can be low power, high performance, created a lot of enthusiasm. And some of the things I'm hearing, the Tom Toms on the street, are the comparison of some of legacy versus this might be the first time that someone can compare a Windows-based PC to Mac in that way, moving more contextual, moving more across the portfolio. What does the next 24 months look like? You know, are you just going after the, the what, what's been? Are you seeing that opportunity over here? How big does this get? And what happens to AI experiences on these edge devices? Absolutely. Look, there's a lot embedded in your question. <laughs> yeah, and I ask really long questions. No, but, that, those, but that, that's good. It's record. And I am going to, I'm going to highlight one thing that is kind of hidden in this whole uh, thing you described and now people are going to bench. Something that, that, was, that happened, you know, on the Mac ecosystem and then what's happened now on the Windows ecosystem. Mobile heritage matters, uh, which is, that's kind of a very unique thing, especially because uh, the mobile phone is incredibly unforgiving. Uh, from, you cannot get away without having leadership on, the, on performance thermals in, in uh, power consumption. And I think that's one thing that is very unique uh, from Qualcomm versus the existing players on the PC space, but on top of it, you actually have uh, Qualcomm deliver on the mission. The mission was, uh, there was a change that happened on personal computing, uh, and you look at the M series, and then the question was, who can deliver that for the Windows ecosystem? And we'll, we'll be tasked with that mission, and, and I think now the outcome is very clear. The Windows ecosystem now has the performance leadership. But what is interesting about this, it's not just a look at the specs of the CPU. No, what is interesting about this is, which I feel the same way I feel about the automotive business, is Qualcomm is providing this leadership position at a time that the experience has fundamentally changed with AI and resets the whole clock. That is one that Microsoft moved first. Microsoft is the first to move to AI. And that is now where the overall technology leadership is for personal computing. And that is the essence what 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 we wanted to do with Axelite. Now, once we get to this point, now I feel I'm gonna answer the rest of your question. Let's look into That's the a lot future. Of questions. Yes, let's look into the future. And I'm gonna I, I like, uh, I, may, I may have said that before, I'm gonna repeat it because I think that's the way to think about it. You look at Copilot Plus got announced. And Copilot Plus got announced and Microsoft said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight some features for you. And by the way, those features, you can only get those features if you actually have this Copilot Plus PC because otherwise your other PC can't get it. You have to go buy a Copilot Plus PC. Like you have Recall which means the AI is running all the time. You know, everything you do, all you need to tell the machine is said, bring me the file, bring me that thing that I work on, bring me that thing that I saw on YouTube three weeks ago. So, okay, you have that. You have uh, a couple other features like photo editing, video editing, you have light translate. And you can count one, two, three, four. I give you four examples. There are four today. That's, just, that's not the roadmap of Copilot Plus. Those are the launch features. There's going to be a number of other use cases that are coming up. Then we go to what we show. We said, look, a developer, a developer now has this machine, went to the AI hub, you know, pick a model, open source model, put the model on the front end, whether it's image, uh, audio, uh, text, create an app, push it. Now this machine can run, you get another use case. You got the DJ, those are just the ones we show. And I think this is what we're going to see now. We're going to see that this is going to be, what are the AI use cases? They're going to be like 10. Then we're going to go in six months, they're going to be hundreds, and it's going to be go to thousands, and that's going to be the new experience. So I feel we have a moment, which is no different than a feature phone going to, to a smartphone, where the apps started to define the experience. Now, what is great about AI, and I, this is a more profound discussion that you probably sign up for, but what's great about AI, eventually you don't need the app. 
and I, I like to provide this example of what's possible. This is where we talk about stable diffusion, and I say, look, this, this is going to be a revolution. I'm going to provide this example just to make a point, right? But like, for example, if you have, think about how we use our apps. So the reason I'm going to use this app, because I'm sure all of you have it, whether it's your credit card or a banking app. And you go in and start the app, you plug in your credentials, you go to the cloud, you get the information displayed a particular way. Let's say now that in the future, the bank decides to build their app on top of the APIs of a model. All you do is ask the model, what is, how much I have in my checkings account? Or what was my last transaction? And the model tell you. And if you're that nostalgic, you want the model to render the, the screen to you like an app, they can do it. So, so it's a whole new world. Everything changed. How we think about apps is going to change. And I think that is how the future is going to look like. Those machines are going to start having those use cases, and that's how the PC experience is going to be. PC is truly reborn. It's when we've had conversations with a, a bunch of your partners this week here too. It's been awesome. they've talked about disruption and they talk about use cases like this. Um, I think the last question I want to ask you is, as you work with those partners, I know it's different than kind of working in the handset world. What's it been like seeing those partners come on board, sign on with you on stage with you? We had that great photo opportunity before before the keynote yesterday. I, I mean, it's like what's the like? How's that? come together for you in the last six months, 12 Look, months? Fantastic. Uh, and especially because one of the things that has been a marquee feature of our company is the ability to, to partner, the ability to partner with the ecosystem. I think it's very simple. It's our philosophy, which means we're not going to be successful. Our partners are not going to be successful. And it's a create really an opportunity uh, for all of us. And I think you saw from all of the partners that join our keynote how excited they are. And actually, first of all, we gave the Windows OEMs uh, the fastest car in the race, right? So, so now they are, they're just, they know that they're gonna start the lap in the pole position. That's a big deal, right? And then we're helping them create a whole new cycle for the industry to create an upgrade. And they know that they're a partner that can count on, and there's a partner that is gonna be with them all the way, and is actually trying to change they look at this as this is an opportunity for them to become not only more relevant, but actually have a whole new uh, cycle of innovation. And, and hopefully it was reflected on stage with hugs and everything, right? Uh, it was. Uh, yeah, it was very positive. It was great to see all of them come out. You know, I think there was a picture of you aligned with all the partners. And I mean, everybody in the ecosystem right now, Cristiano, understands what a massive inflection this is. The group of keynotes at this event, you know, with you and, and, and the other leaders of large semiconductor companies around the world is, is very indicative to me that they all understand what's at stake here. And to your credit, the sort of inflection of a new architecture for PCs and new experiences, which you, you sort of shared here with everyone, because I agree with you, the model becomes the software. Yes. And that's going to be an interesting in change that's coming our way. But um, this is it. This is the moment. It won't look like this next year because it's going to be head down. This was the moment. And I think you really, the, the company shined. And of course, you, oh, you know, thank your, your you. keynote really shined. And we appreciate you so much uh, sitting down with us. We're, we're busy at work. Uh, we, I think this is an important moment for a company, and I think we're executing on, on, on changing the company into uh, a company that is gonna be recognized as uh, an AI, AI company for the edge. It's gonna deliver uh, intelligent computing everywhere, and, uh, and we're doing it with pur purpose, and I think uh, this event really meant like another big step for us. It definitely was. And I'll save you 10 minutes by not asking you a data center GPU question. But Cristiano Amon, President and CEO of Qualcomm, thank you so much for joining the 6.5 here in Taiwan. Pleasure to be here. And thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate you being part of our community and part of this exclusive coverage of the 6.5 on the road here at Computex 2024. For Ryan Strout, myself, and the whole crew, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all later.